Well, hello there. How's it going? So, as you can probably tell from the title of the video, today we're going to be talking about the Gen Synthesizer again. This is, what, video 5 now? Anyway, um, at the end of the last video, uh, we came to the conclusion that the chip had gone pop, and that there were none of the right signals coming out of it. And I think the plan was to use um, either an Arduino or a Pi or something to recreate the chip and see if we could sort of go from there, you know, using the original uh, modules and everything, but just have the signal generation come from, um, come from a, a recreation. But that's not necessary. Uh, great news. The bearded wonder himself, my other half, he found um, some new old stock M110 chips that were um, unused and apparently tested before sending out. So, yeah, we had to wait a little while for it to come from, I think, either Spain or Italy. So it arrived and it's all ready to go in the synthesizer and, yeah, Fingers crossed, eh? There's nothing better than having original kit to go in there instead of making something new. And so without further ado, let's grab everything together, head out to the garage and get cracking. See you in a minute. And here's the key to the whole plan. A new old stock M110 chip. Fingers crossed, this is all that we need. So, first things first, even though I'm sure I've checked it all before, my plan is to take the old chip out, power everything up, and make sure there's no voltages where there shouldn't be, because I don't know when or if we'll be able to find another one of these chips, so I want to do my absolute best to make sure that there's no danger whatsoever to it. And then, if it all checks out, we can install it and see what happens. So the voltages I'm checking with regards to zero volts on the power supply, it seems a fairly easily accessible and unoxidized uh, connector to go to. Everything seems to check out, so let's see what happens if we put the new chip in. Exciting times. So that's the new chip plugged in, power supply attached, and an amplifier connected to the output. So now it's time to turn it on and see what we can see. Or possibly what we can hear. I'm kind of hoping for some noises. Preferably better noises than the ones we had before. Um, if it isn't this chip, then I don't know what it is. But let's find out. And there we have it, keyboard sounding noises from the keyboard, which isn't a surprise given what it's supposed to be. But there are still issues. It's very noisy, it's very crackly, and it seems as though sometimes the signal gets through and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it works. The glide control works, the um, different octaves seem to work. Everything's nice and happy. But it does sound kind of terrible. There's a popping when the envelope's triggered and just all sorts of stuff that isn't right. But the most important thing is, is that we know it isn't right because it's producing sound. Which is like 100% improvement from last time. We actually have a synthesizer that's making synthesizer noises. And now it's going to be so much easier to work through the rest of the components to see what's wrong and what we can do with it. And for the first time in a long time, I'm really excited by this. It's a big step forward. And at this point, my coffee was getting cold and so was I. So I figured it was about time to take all of the modular circuit boards back out, give them a damn good rinse in isopropyl alcohol and leave them overnight. And before I left, it would be a good time to spray the chassis with clear coat lacquer. 
there's no way that I'd be able to touch the paintwork up and bring it back to showroom standard. And I also feel it would be an insult to it if we did. We can retain the patina, retain its history, but stop it from degrading much further and keeping what's left of the, uh, the original graphics on the top there. Okay, so welcome to day two, and as you can see, I'm not in the garage anymore. I'm at the kitchen table. It was minus three outside, and then overnight it snowed and got even colder for the next day, and there's not much in the way of insulation in the garage, so the kettle's close by and it's warm in the kitchen, so that's where I am. And first things first, now that we know the keyboard is good, I'm going to put the circuit board back into the actual keybed, which takes a lot more effort than you'd think it does. Each of the switches is just a little spring that slots into a hole on the underside of the keys, and they're a pain in the backside to do. Um, tweezers were needed, and patience. Tweezers and a lot of patience. But I got it done eventually, and I'm kind of hoping that I'm not going to need to undo anything on there anymore from now on. Because that bit we know works, which is fantastic. And we can start looking at everything else that needs working on it, and everything else that needs fixing. So now that the key bed's been screwed back into place, and hopefully isn't coming out ever again, it's time to get everything put back into the chassis. Now, I'm referring to my mobile phone here because I took plenty of photos before I took everything back out of it. And we need to reconnect everything from the wiring loom um, to the mains input. I think it's come out okay with the lacquer. Possibly a little too shiny for my taste, but we'll, we'll see how that ages. I mean, it's mostly cured overnight, but I think it does take a little while longer, especially in cold conditions. Um, the most important thing, of course, to remember is to make sure that I've got all the washers in the right places and make sure that I'm using the right nuts for the right pots because the switches actually have a deeper nut on them to hold them to the case. And once everything's back in place, it should be time to see what sort of noises we get out of it once everything's connected up and everything's grounded properly. Um, and everything is running as it should. Do I think it's going to work 100%? No. Do I think it's going to give us a great chance to work out what's wrong with it? Yeah. Okay, so now that everything's all in position and bolted back together, it's time to connect the wiring loom. And again, I refer to the photos on my mobile phone, because... You really don't want to get this the wrong way around. But interestingly enough, it's fairly self-evident where things go. The cables have been left in position and left curled for so long that they kind of automatically kind of root themselves in the direction that they're supposed to go. But obviously it's still best to, to check photos from the day before because, you know, I don't want to be repairing even more issues on this. So yeah, that's a fair amount of loom to connect back up. And once it's all done, are we going to get any sounds out of it? Well, I mean, obviously we're going to get sounds out of it because we did yesterday. But given the cleaning and the relubing and everything else and the grounding of everything, are we actually going to get better sounds than yesterday? And the answer is yes and no. Um, not perfect. Better than yesterday. Much better than the day before. Uh, and now that we're getting sound out of it, and we know that we're getting the right sort of um, signals from the M110 chip, I can go in with the oscilloscope and follow the sound signal as it goes through each of the modules and work out which bits aren't playing ball and which bits aren't triggering the other 
modules and everything else. It's fantastic. Um, it's looking like a synthesizer for the first time in God knows how long. It's sounding almost like a synthesizer for the first time since we've had it. And I can't wait to get to work on it further. But further work, I think, is going to have to wait for another day. So all that remains is to say thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, there's a button for that. And if you want to see more of this sort of thing, there's a subscribe button for that. It's fairly standard YouTube thing to say, and thanks to all my Patreon subscribers, but I don't have a Patreon, so I can't do that. I do have a link that you can buy me a coffee if you want to. That'd be really nice, because, like, lots of coffees went cold when I was recording this. But yes, anyway, enough rambling from me. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I will catch you on the flip side. Cheerio!